hello guys welcome back to this channel and thank you for watching in part one of this series we introduced the end-to-end -end architecture of hyper network for service provider and in part two we discussed different topologies deployed on hyper network to achieve physical connectivity for remote sites kindly remember to watch part one and two for better understanding of this series today we'll be focusing on ip address design for hyper network so once you've installed your devices at site, maybe a router, a switch, a BTS or radio network controller, you have to set up your physical connections of the IPRA network by connecting base stations to CSGs, CSGs to the RSGs, SGs need to connect to the RSGs and RSGs need to connect to the base station controllers. Many times we use single mode fibers for connecting nodes at remote sites. Those ones that are installed not in the same room, maybe 10 kilometers or 20 kilometers or whichever distance. Normally we use single mode fibers for such connections. Or you can use Ethernet cables or multi mode fiber for nodes that are installed in the same server room. And you only require maybe 1G connections. So once you have physical connections for these nodes from the base stations to the controllers, now you require to establish logical connectivity between these entities. So for logical connectivity, we normally use IP addresses to achieve it. And you require different types of IP addresses on an IP network. The first set of IP addresses that you require is the system IPs. These are the loopback zero IPs or system IPs that are configured for management of the node. So you give it, every node is normally assigned a unique IP for management and normally we use slash 32 for system IPs. These system IPs are also used as the router IDs. They will be used as uh, LSR ID for MPLS and many other usages for these system IPs. The next set of IP that you require are the point-to-point -point IPs. So these are the IPs you configure between two adjacent nodes. You have a router, a CSG and an SG. You need to configure point-to-point -point IP between them. And normally we use slash that one. Remember an IP network is huge. You can't use slash 24 or maybe slash 29, you will be wasting so many IPs. That's why we normally use slash that one for the point-to-point -point IPs on IP run network. So you use slash that one IPs for point-to-point -point connection. Then for system IPs, you use slash 32 IPs. So normally we have different subnets for system IPs and then different subnets for point-to-point -point IPs just for easy identification when you are troubleshooting or when you are managing your network. So, you know, this one is system IP for the node. These one are the point-to-point -point IPs for the nodes and you give them specific different subnets for that. So you can have different, uh, you can have uh, many subnets. Maybe you have five subnets. You can have 10 subnets for point-to-point. Also, depending on how big your network, you will need multiple subnets, maybe slash 24 subnets for system IPs, but then you assign slash 32s for the system IPs. The third set of IP that you require, these are service IPs. Now, these one are configured, mainly configured between the CSG and the base station, and also between the RSG and the base station controller. So, this one... The number of IPs you require mainly depends on how many services you are running. You could be having a subnet for 2G, a subnet for 3G, a subnet for 4G, and a subnet for 5G, or even a, sub, a subnet for DCN of the node. So the number of IPs you require for the service IP also depends on how many services you are running and how many base stations or how many access sites you have in your network. So for, for the IPRA network of a service provider, normally uh, it's divided into regions. And normally it's a best practice to assign 
different subnets for different regions. For example, you can have a specific subnet as the system IP for region 1. You have a specific subnet for region 3, region 4, and region 2. So this one helps you in ease identification of the nodes. If you find this IP 10.10.10. maybe 1, you know oh, this is region 1. Then you can also give different subnets for the point-to-point -point IPs. Each region you give it a unique point-to-point -point IP. So it's just for ease of identification and ease of management when you are troubleshooting in your network. You know which IP belongs to where, which node belongs to which region. For the service IP, that one can be random, uh, but you can also go with the same. You give specific regions, specific subnets to be used for the service IPs. So this is how you design the IP address for IPRA network and the number of IPs you require mainly depends on how big is your network. If you only have two routers then yeah, you can use slash 24 because you don't need so many IPs but in an IPRA network it's normally huge so you need to be keen on the subnetting. You use slash 31 for point to point, you use slash 32 for system IPs. Then for the service IPs, normally I see using slash 29 or 28, and depending on the business requirements of the ISP. So that is it on IP address design for IPRA network. And thank you for watching, and please remember to subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Bye.